member of the of the panel. Um, I, this has been in, in the works for some time, I believe. This conference was not planned in a few days. But in the past few days, there have been several events that have happened that certainly have changed a lot of the conversation in America. <clears throat> I see that not only in my role as a state senator, I also right now I'm campaigning uh, for US Congress as Congressman Carney runs for governor in 2016. And I want to share two stories, one as a state senator, one as a congressional candidate. A few days ago, I was meeting with the Neighborhood Association in, in Southern Delaware. And I did a brief introduction of myself, and I love going to Q&A right away. I love making sure that we're talking about whatever it is you want to be talking about. I was shocked by how almost the entirety of the Q&A was dominated by questions about immigration, dominated by questions about Paris, about our military strategy in the Middle East, San Bernardino had just happened, and so news reporting was still very um, incomplete. And to hear the questions from this audience, which was not politically assembled, it was not a, an audience of Democrats in a Democratic primary, it was an audience across the political spectrum from this neighborhood. Um, to hear questions that they had, to hear, to hear questions that they had about why in Britain uh, the British government is allowing foreign law to guide, uh, to guide what happens in towns in Britain that are made up primarily of Muslims. For me to respond to them and, and, and say, I don't think it's that the British law is, is saying that there can't be a pub in that town. I think it's more that if there isn't so much a customer base in the town for a pub, then a smart pub owner uh, might not keep a pub open. And I was trying to be polite in explaining to them um, really what forces are at play, but, but for me to hear so much uh, from a group that indicated a certain vision of what America means and what it means to be American and what it looks like to be American. And to contrast that with the brief story I'll mention in my state Senate capacity where I believe it was earlier this calendar year, might have been last calendar year, where I was at the Islamic Society of Delaware for a, a, a carnival. It was a very, very brief introduction. It was a whirlwind of a quick tour through the carnival. And I came across the grill. And the language being spoken across, around the grill was not English. But I asked for a, a quick translation from my friend who had, who had introduced me to, uh, to many of the members present there. And it was a kind of conversation that happens around almost any American grill where there are four, or five, or any more than two, basically, men. Who's grilling the best? Why the person on the, on the grill at that moment is doing it wrong? <laughs> it, was, it was amazing. For, and, I, and, and, and then what, what wasn't typical, though, about an American Girl story, but what was very inspirational about that American Girl story at the, at the Islamic Society was that when I was introduced to the, to the people around the grill, and learned that they were leaders in Delaware, in Delaware finance, in the Delaware chemical industries, in Delaware medicine. I was surprised, but not surprised. But when compared to the questions I, I fielded earlier this week, from a different group of Delawareans and understanding what, what many of them, not all of them, but what many of them envision when they think of an American grill. Those, those two stories clash. And they clash at a time now when, for some of the very legitimate national security concerns that have been raised here about how we respond to different situations in our, in our world, about how we respond to, in my belief, accepting refugees from a war-torn region but making sure to do very appropriate security screenings. Or now, even more complicated, how we change our immigration laws to adjust for the fact that setting refugees aside, we have other issues in our immigration laws that allow people to come to America without any security screenings. And, and very unfortunately, it seems like that may have been related to a tragedy in California that is entirely unrelated to the way in which the dramatic majority of Muslims in America and throughout the world practice their faith. 
But it very much is something that I see on the campaign trail, and the tragedies in the recent weeks have changed the, the conversations, the questions that I'm asked as a congressional candidate. But most importantly, I, I want to say, in my role as state senator, to highly encourage all of you to make sure to be proactive in engaging with your local elected officials. Where the dramatic majority of laws in our country are passed, where in many ways the biggest difference in your day-to-day -day lives is formed, making sure you know who your state senator and your state representatives are, meeting with him or her at least once a year, making sure that he or she puts your face to your name, is an important part of what needs to happen in America given the tremendous forces at play. It is, an imper it is imperative, and I've enjoyed so much my conversations the past months with members of Delaware's Muslim community, focusing often on how difficult the Affordable Care Act can be to comply with, focusing on what role the minimum wage has in trying to ensure economic prosperity or at the least avoid economic poverty, talking about how to improve Delaware's education system. These are the conversations that I've had with leading Muslims in Delaware's community. These are the conversations that I try to share with other Delawareans who might not, right off the bat, understand the diversity within Islam as a theology and religion, the diversity within the Delaware Muslim community and what people's concerns are. That's the message I try to share. I implore that you help me and help others share that message, primarily by making sure to be involved and emailing us or calling us and asking us to meet for a meal, asking us just to meet um, down in Dover or come to your home. Being part of the political process before you might need to even ask for assistance with something is critical, particularly given what we're seeing ha unfolding at the global level and at the national level. I know for a fact that there are tremendously intelligent and articulate and even humorous, um, although one in particular not as funny as he thinks he is, uh, members of the Muslim community here in Delaware. And I, I know that for a fact. I'm sharing that with my colleagues. I invite you and ask and, and implore that you continue to play a role. I think a conference like today is a key, key start of a, of a broader voice for Delaware's Muslim community. I think inviting more elected officials, uh, I was with, Re with Congressman Carney, uh, Representative Ed Ozinski, and myself at the Eid Festival at the, at the Bob Carpenter Center in July, uh, making sure we understand what role we can play, understand more about all Delawareans, especially with such a beautiful culture at a time when so much of the world might assume otherwise, is a critical thing that we need to develop here in Delaware. Conferences like today are a key start. I thank you so much for your participation and for the honor of being invited and would love, to, if any time that remains, to answer any questions as part of the panel, but certainly afterwards here. Um, and I look forward to the second annual conference, the third annual conference, and many more in the future. Thank you very much. The, the Delaware Council is very grateful for Brian, who's reached out to us and has also been very helpful uh, in arranging uh, many things up 